Today, wildfires are more widespread for more seasons of the year, and people are looking for ways to protect their homes. We're going to show you a proven tool for wildfire defense and test to see exactly how it works. About 60 to 90 percent of the home ignitions during wildfires happen from the tiny embers that are generated by the fire. They blow ahead of the fire, carried by the heat and the winds that, that drive fires typically. Houses can also ignite from direct flame exposure. If flames can reach out and touch the building materials, ignite the building materials directly. And then in some cases, radiant heat. And that's like the, you know, the heat that you feel from a campfire. If there's enough of it, it can actually ignite surfaces. So a top priority is to create a shield to keep out embers and flames from vented attics and crawl spaces. Examples of what we call buffer spaces. A few years ago, I found these at the International Builders Show. They're called Vulcan vents, and we'll be testing a couple other types of fire resistant vents alongside to show you why I was excited about these specifically. First, since these are vents, they should allow air to flow freely. Let's test how well they do that. Now, these come in different shapes and sizes for different parts of the home, but for this comparison, we will stick with a standard 6 by 14 inch crawl space vent. What we have here is one of our duct testing fans that we're going to use to create the airflow and measure it. And we're also going to be testing the static pressure drop across the vents, which is another way to demonstrate how restrictive they are against airflow. First, we're going to test the Vulcan vent. Now, even though this is a 6 by 14 inch vent, air can only move through the inside of the frame, and the opening is 54 square inches. First, let's just test the box so you can see how this works. And we have a fog machine over here. I'm going to set my fan to a constant speed. You can watch the fog empty out. You can also see the airflow with the little ribbons here. Right now, we are moving almost exactly 100 cubic feet per minute, or CFM, which is how we talk about airflow. And our pressure drop over just this hole in the panel here is one. Now we're going to go ahead and add the Vulcan vent. And where we started with 100 CFM and one, the pressure drop, the resistance of this vent is five times more than just nothing. But the airflow, interestingly, is almost exactly what we had to begin with. So even though, yes, it is putting some things in the flow of the air, we're getting a result that's almost exactly the same as if we had nothing there. Now let's test a silica vent, which kind of freaked me out once we got inside of it, because this looks exactly like asbestos. It's not, but you still shouldn't experiment with these at home like we've done here. Silica dust and fibers are also very bad to breathe. Then the metal frame on this design has an opening of 45.7 square inches on the back, but only 31 square inches on the front, and the smaller hole governs the flow. If you can't see through it, obviously it's harder for air to go through it too. All right. Now you can see this silica vent is allowing some of the fog to empty out of the first part of the box but the ribbons are not really that visible. There's not that much airflow happening here. We already know that. Our pressure drop is 160 times what it was with just a wide open hole. So that means that it's very restrictive and you can see over here. We can't even get a number. We're gonna have to add a ring to this to make my fan move air faster in order to figure out what this is. Great. So now we're back at the pressure that we had before, and you can see that my airflow is actually only 27 CFM. So about a quarter of what it was with the first event that we tested. Lastly, we have a baffled vent. Now this one is kind of a strange combo because you can't see through it, but it does look like an easier pathway for airflow. However, since all the air has to squeeze through these two three quarter inch slots on the back, the opening area of this frame is only 19.1 square inches, much less than either of the other two vents. Okay, now this vent is moving air. You can see the ribbons flowing. You can see that we're emptying out all the fog. We're at about 50 times the resistance as the wide open hole. And the airflow is down at around 86 CFM. So we got about a 15% drop in the airflow along with a 50 times resistance factor. So as far as airflow goes, the Vulcan definitely outperformed the other kinds. Now, let's play with fire. 
Kids, do not play with fire without your parents. And you're awesome for watching this channel. A huge advance in the fire safe technology here is intumescent coatings, which work something like a bulletproof vest. They don't sag away from the heat of flames, they actually swell up and become a shield. So these Vulcan vents will seal off completely and create a firewall if the wildfire's flames get close enough to the house, which we hope doesn't happen. The screens on all three of these will capture flying embers all day, every day, so you'll automatically be safer from those. But in the case of actual flames, any intumescent barrier activates only once. If the outside of your home gets hot enough to activate it, though, you'll need to replace everything around the vent anyway. Your gutters, your siding, your windows, and who knows what else. But at least you won't be rebuilding your entire home. This silica vent didn't do so well on the airflow side, but it obviously will catch embers and shouldn't melt, although you'll probably be replacing it because the metal frame will get scorched. Lastly, the baffled vent has this screen on the back which grabs embers, and the flame resistance barrier comes from the intumescent pads along the inner fins, which should swell up and block the airflow. All in all, Anything you can do for wildfire defense deserves a pat on the back because wildfires are a new normal in a lot of places that never had them before. Aside from fire safe vents, don't forget to clean your roof, gutters, and around your home and don't pile flammable stuff against the house so a fire has no fuel to wreck your life with. We'll all learn lots more about disasters and resilience improvements on season three of Home Diagnosis. If you have comments or questions, please leave them below. We answer those personally. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.